great Anne Edith was a wonderful artist. She was one of those post-Victorian girls who grew up in Wheeling, West Virginia, and in 1889, she went to New York City and studied at the Art Students League. She lived in a time, of course, when it was extremely difficult for women to be recognized as artists. She could paint. She was I know. amazing. Yeah. I'm really blown away. <laughs> she had a companion named Fanny. I have no doubts that she was gay, but probably Edith didn't want anyone to know about that. In 1925, for reasons unknown, Edith was committed to an asylum. And all of her worldly possessions, her art, her sketchbooks, her charcoals, her paintings were all packed up into trunks, sent back to Wheeling, and Edith was never heard from again. So 40 years later, my mom is visiting the relatives in West Virginia, and she goes up into the attic, and she opens up the trunks, and she sees dozens and dozens of these light drenched paintings and she takes them home with her and I got to grow up surrounded by Edith's work. I moved to New York when I was 20 because like Edith, I had dreams of becoming an artist. I had to find out more about Edith, so I went to Provincetown searching for clues about her life. No one had ever heard of her and frankly, no one cared. I'm now in my late 50s which is the same age that Edith was when she was put away. But I'm still productive, I'm still very much loved, and I have the life that Edith should have had. And so now I'm taking up the Edith cause again to unravel the mystery of her lost life and return her work to Provincetown. Where I am just giving them a bath